I wonder how many people in the audience have read the book World War Z? Anyone? Nobody's read World War Z by Max Brooks, really? All right, here's an assignment for all of you. Read World War Z. This is like the core audience for World War Z. You'll love the book. It's a book about the zombie apocalypse. And uh, if I remember correctly, um, the, uh, the zombie invasion actually started in China in this book. They're never, really, uh, they're never really clear about what happened in China and why the zombies came from China, but apparently we're about to find out. Um, it, it was apparently PopCap's fault all along. Um, I'd like to introduce Leo Liu from PopCap. He's the GM of PopCap China. Um, and we have a unique opportunity in this case to take a look at a game that was very, very successful around the world and has also been finding some success in China. And, uh, and Liu is going to give us some insight as to how that happened. Come on up on stage and, and tell us how. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. So I'm Leo from PopCap China. So I run PopCap business in China. Uh, today, I would like to share you some story about how zombies work on the Great Wall of China and turn it into a great business. So I think most of you have played this game called Plants vs. Zombies, no matter on your PC, on your iPhone, or iPad. So it's a great game for the last four years. But actually in China, the situation is totally different. So it started with a big brand, but turns out into no business. And finally, we figured out a way to not only have a great brand, but also a great business. So when people talk about China, always start with the huge numbers. 1.3 billion people there, and the market size is huge. The total revenue close to 10 billion US dollars, which is a huge market. It's, if it is not bigger than the US market, it's in the scale, it's very similar. And the annual increment for the revenue of the total game market in China is 30%, such a huge market and grow in very rapid speed. In the same time, you can see I break out the, the revenue stream into three columns. One is the traditional MMRPGs, uh, which is the biggest in revenue stream, but in terms of the growing speed, it is the slowest. The second part is the web and social. It increased very fast for the last two to three years, but it slowed down this year. But you see the green part, which is the mobile part, enjoyed faster growing for the last two years. The revenue today is small, but the increment uh, speed is huge, almost double in the last year. But that's not the truth. When we talk then about numbers, this is a huge market. Every international company go to, goes to China with a big ambition, with a big forecast. Usually, the idea started with this formula. There are 1.3 billion people there. If everyone pay me $1, there will be a 1.3 billion US dollars opportunities for me. Very simple. This is a mathematics. Even an elementary school student can do this mathematics. But the situation is, this is the Facebook in China. If you type facebook.com, this is the very page you will see, luckily and unluckily. And this is the APP store ranking for the top grossing, top paid, and top free app. I think most of these apps you are not familiar with. Most of them are in Chinese. Clash and Clans might be the only game you will be noticed. That's from global. All the rest are local Chinese game developers content. And even worse, this is the ranking snapshot for the APP store in China between April 28th and May 5th. For the first column, which is the paid app, for the last column, that's top grossing. You don't need to look at that. But in the center, which is the free app, every day, the top five changed. Is that surprising? Every day, the top five is different, almost different. What is the reason behind ranking manipulation? P 
people paid to get their name on the top five. Because we know Apple on Apple App Store, ranking is the best way to promote a game. If you are, your game is on the top five, there is a guarantee for downloadable number. It's supposed to be more than 100,000 downloads a day. If it's on top two, probably 200,000 downloads a day. That's why people pay to get to this top five list, which is very challenging. Even worse. So when we talk about the, the, the market, Apple in China is comparatively small in terms of market share. Android is huge. But in China, there are more than 40 APP stores. This is a, just a small number I put here. I don't want to scare most of you. Because some co local Chinese company work with 280 stores in China. Seriously, that's, that is the number. If you look at it from the international perspective, you think it's crazy. If you're working in the US, you only need to work with two Android store, which is Amazon and uh, Google Play. That's it. But in China, at least you need to work with more than 10 or even 20 stores. If you are aggressive, 280, that's the target you should be set up. And in the same time, the Paris is huge. So I'm wearing a genuine Plants vs. Zombie t-shirt. But on the market, there are more than 100 million uh, pirated t-shirt in the market, so which is a challenge to our business. And when we launch our game in China, we need to work with three different carriers. And each carrier, they, they have two division fight with each other to grab this mobile business. So that means six divisions, two multiple three, that's equal six. You need to work with six. Sometimes they're enemy. Sometimes they are friend, which is another challenge. In China, 30 OEMs. And today, we, sub we need to support 1,000 SKUs of Android, store, uh, of Android devices. In US, our colleagues provide us a list with 17 SKUs only, so which is a paradise. In China, 1,000, which seems to be a hell. Uh, in US, Google, Apple just take 30%. But in China, the billing cost will goes up to more than 40%. And the channel will take another 50. That means that as a developer, what you can get is 30%. 30 versus 70. That's a huge difference, another challenge. Uh, even worse. When we launch our single play game in China, everyone told us, don't do that. Chinese people would not pay for a single downloadable game. We know on PC, the revenue is very small. People even forget about there is a market called PC game. Online game is everywhere. For m mobile, it's the same idea. This is the si situation we are facing. Almost every role seems to be a dead role, dead end role. What is the future for us? So we, we, we made a version of Plants vs. Zombie called PVZ Great Wall. And by this version, we crack it into the China market in the Android space. This is the logo of Plants vs. Zombies Great Wall. Here's the revenue history of the PVZ Great Wall. I cannot show you the detailed number, but you can see the, the revenue curve. When we launched the game back to 2000, 12 May time, the, re the first day revenue is 400 RMB equals to divided by six. That's a little more than 50 US dollars, so which is a very small number. But as the time progress, we improve the game, we improve the quality of the game, we improve the monetization, we add more billing, and we add more content, the revenue goes up. And finally, during the Chinese New Year, the revenue goes to a very high peak, which is the number one in the China market. Here is a screenshot from the biggest mobile platform in China called Tencent. They have 
roughly 200, 200 million DAUs in China. PVZ ranks number one in the list. All the rest are local developer game. I think some of you might be noticed about this game. In Chinese, it's called Shui Guo Wu Shi. It's called, translated into Chinese, it's uh, Fruit Warriors. It's not Fruit Ninja. All the rest of the games, I think none of you might be ever heard, and this is the reality. And every game makes big money. PVZ is the only global title on this list. That's the fact. What is PVZ Great Wall? The first is the original Plants vs. Zombie in the global market is iOS and the PC. But in China, we found out that Android has much bigger potential in China. Even there is a lot of challenge to building the OEM spec and the resolution and the carrier split. Almost everything seems to be challenged. But we found that that's a much bigger market for a game. So we turn iOS into an Android game. And we turn premium into a freemium. We add local contents and we add local billing. The first thing we do is add a great wall background to the game. In US, many people have house. In China, house is very rare. So people used to live in apartment. I think it's the same thing happened in Singapore. So that's why the backyard to many Chinese people are not familiar with. But the great wall, every Chinese people know that. So we turn the background from backyard onto a great wall so people might be familiar with and interesting to play the game. And they think that the contents is dedicated, designed for the Chinese people. They think that they are being respected. The second is we add a paywall to the game. The original game is premium. premium. People download a game for $6.99 or $2.99 US dollars from iOS. But in China, when you download from an Android store, you don't need to pay any money. But after level 3, you need to pay 4 RMB to unlock the rest of the game. And then, inside the game, there is a, a, a currency called a gold. You can get a gold to unlock the mini game. And there is a diamond, which is the hard currency. You can buy consumable uh, items, like a cherry bomb. We increase the difficulty of the game, so some of the people might face the challenge to finish the game. And they, then they can decide to pay for the contents to buy the consumable products so that they can overcome the level. Or they can decide to drop the game. So here is the revenue breakdown for our PVC Great Wall. When we launch the game, the unlock for RMB part play a very important part of the total revenue, 26. But as the time progress, as our revenue goes up, it play today it play a very small part of our revenue. That means, as the time progress, the capability of the IAP significantly increased. The total revenue increased. More people, people consume more in-game consumable items than paying the unlock for RMB. So that's the situation changed. And all these was caused by the local development. The content added to the game and the change of the monetization. Here's the top five consumable items inside of the game. The top one is called Bomb Boost. It's full screen cherry bomb. You, you pay 2 RMB to get this, and the whole screen will be clean. Every zombie will be eliminated from the screen. But you need to pay 2 RMB. So it's very useful uh, items inside a game, especially when people facing the big challenge in the endless mode. The sun. 500, 2,000 suns is the resources people are looking for. So if they are facing the challenge, they don't have enough sunflowers, they don't have enough suns, they can pay money to get all these suns. 
And uh, by doing this, you can see all these items are consumable items. People buy money either to get rid of the difficulty or reduce the difficulty. Like cherry bomb is just get rid of the zombies. Sunflowers, suns, they just want to make life easier. They don't have enough time or for planting the sunflower or the cool down for the sunflower is too long. So they just pay the money to decrease the difficulty for their game. Here's another important thing we added to the game. So on Apple, we use Apple Payment. But in China, credit card is not that popular. So we use the carrier's billing. People only need to make two clicks. Are you willing to pay to RMB? Yes. Confirmed? Yes. Done. They don't need to input any password, username. So all the process can be finished in five seconds. I would not stop user their experience when they're playing the game. It's very important because when people play the game facing the difficulty, they have impulse, consumption, attempt. attempt. If we ask them to lo log into a page, log into their account, input a few things, sometimes they don't remember their password, all this activity is a Infernal, the user will be go away through this terminal. And we keep updating the game by adding new contents. It started with the endless mode, last stand and endless, and the journey to the west. The original Chinese version called Great War, the second biggest uh, expansion called the journey to the west, which is the monkey king. Every Chinese people knows that. Here is some um, journey to the West zombies. Most of the zombies can be recognized by Chinese in one second. They know this is this guy, this big guy called Niu Mo Wang. It's, it's like a bow something, and the other is uh, Hong Hai er in Chinese. So we, every Chinese people think, oh, this is familiar. This is interesting. So when we do marketing, it's very important vehicle to reach to the users. Here's some other zombies, small zombies. We changed the balloon zombies into a Latin zombie. So, you know, in China, we have a Latin festival. So people think, oh, great, this is uh, interesting. Uh, this is, the, excuse me. And uh, this is the Journey to the West screenshot. So we display this. Uh, Actually, Journey to the West is a teamwork. Four guys all together from China to India to, to get something back. So this is a teamwork. It's like uh, plants versus zombies. You need to have different plants to work together to overcome the difficulty. So Chinese people like this kind of idea. And the background image changed from Great Wall to the paradise and to the some certain circumstance inside the story. So Chinese people can easily tell what is this. This is called the Tian Gong, the paradise. This is called the Huayan Shan, the fire mountain. Another very important things we did in China is shrink the build size. The original PVC game the very first build we, we, we made on Android is 72 megabyte. But today, the game is only 8.4 megabyte. Every time we shrink the build, the revenue goes up. So the reason behind it is many people in China are still using 2G to download the game. And every people in China have a data package. Some people, m more than 80% of the people, their data package is less than 20 megabyte per month. So if you deliver a 30 megabyte game, it will cost users two months to download the game. Don't do that. So and the running memory shrink from 100 megabyte to 48 megabyte. Every time we shrink the running memory, the revenues goes up. 
So how we did? We almost took everything outside the game. The phone, the music, the resolution. The first priority for us is to make sure the game can reach user's device. We sacrificed some quality, but we will make sure this is the best game they can get from us. And this is the best game can run on their devices. We, were, we are not using iPad or iPhone as a benchmark. We use cannot reach or cannot run on the devices as the benchmark. If the game cannot run on their devices, what the quality means? If the game cannot reach their devices, how people can enjoy the quality? So here's the result. Every time we shrink the build, you see revenues goes up. And downloadable number goes up. The smaller the size, the more people can download the game. And in China, you know, cheating, hacking is very fierce. So we add anti-hacking things to the game. Verification code, when people storage their data. By doing this, we can prevent 95 of the cheatings. It's not that difficult from the technical perspective, but we significantly increase the difficulty for people to do cheating. And by providing another solution for billing, people have two ways. One way is to download a crack tools, cheating tools, from a website with risks. The other is just two click, they can buy the items and they play the game. And with no risk. So people prefer to choose the latter, 95%. And all these things happened because of uh, we have a local team, 60 people in, Ch in, Ch in China. Most of them are Chinese people. We know the China market. We work as hard as the local competitors. And we work with all these crazy stores, carriers. That's why we can make this thing happen. The Seattle give us freedom to make local decision give us local autonomy to design the, the Great Wall things and the journey to the Western things. We don't need to have all the approval process running up to, rolling up to the Seattle. So we make lo local decision. So our performance judged by the result. It's not by the procedure. If we need to apply all our design, all our plan to Seattle, Seattle knows U.S. people knows they will not understand this because this is a totally different market. It's not about right and wrong. It's just different. If you want to go to China, I hope this presentation gives you some ideas. It is a huge market, but it is very much different. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, send an email. Thank you, Leo. I just have one short question. Did those t-shirts actually <laughs> say, I love James? Uh, yes, James, uh, James was the general manager for PopCap China. Actually, he start, uh, started PopCap China and PopCap Asia. He was back to US uh, in the Christmas last year. So we hold a big party. Everyone wear a T-shirt called James. We love James. I love James. So James is the guy in the center. He's the founder of the Pop Cap Asia. Thank you very much. So um, I guess if there's no questions, we'll move on to our next presenter. That's very informative. Thank okay. you for the screenshots. Thank you.